See you then. Okay, see you. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Uh, we will start in another probably three to four minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to make sure that uh, is my audio fine and uh, can you see my uh, PPT? Could anyone please uh, participants confirm? Okay, can hear clearly. Thank you. Thank you, Lu Ang. Uh, let's wait for two more minutes. We have about uh, hundreds of uh, registrations. We will start in another few minutes. We just give one more minute uh, by three or one we start. Okay, while you are waiting, in the meantime, I will start with my uh, introduction. Uh, as you might receive the uh, EDM, uh, my name is Murali Krishnan. Uh, I am working in VMware. Um, so I started uh, as a technical trainer. Uh, basically, I deliver training of all VMware solutions to internal employees, uh, external customers, partners, and so on. Uh, actually, previously, before VMware, I was with uh, NTUC Learning Hub. Uh, when I was in NTUC Learning Hub, I was teaching uh, Microsoft, Cisco, and uh, security courses. Um, of course, this is a webinar, so we don't have time <laughs> to go around and uh, ask for uh, self-introduction here. So, um, uh, uh, so uh, and, 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 and today's topic, you might know based on the EDM, uh, we're going to talk about uh, VMware cloud technologies, okay? And um, I will talk about uh, an hour uh, to explain uh, 
what is vmware what is vmware in, uh, doing in terms of cloud what are the product solutions that that, that we have uh, and um, by 4 4 4 pm uh, there will be someone from ntuc learning hub joining and explaining about the courses that they have related to what we discussed today okay so i cover a little bit of technical solution overview uh, in in in, uh, in in one hour then four o'clock we will talk about uh, some courses that helps you to scale up plus we have uh, some courses uh, there are fundings uh, up to 95 percent so uh, ntuc learning hub someone uh, a representative will, will talk about it all right so the topic today is um uh, reg regarding cloud and uh, where we are going in, in, in terms of cloud, what's happening in, 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 uh, in IT infrastructure so that uh, you are aware, number one. Number two, uh, you can choose your path. Uh, which path would you like to? You know, IT, there are so many things, right? Even if you choose infrastructure, there are so many uh, different uh, infrastructure roles out there. Um, so, so, so we're going to talk about the latest technologies uh, so that you can choose your path and uh, you can scale up to a, to a related technologies. Or you might, might, you might be already working in IT, maybe you want to switch uh, to a different uh, field in IT within itself, uh, or maybe you want to explore more, uh, you know. Uh, so, so this webinar will, will help you to understand. So this is the very first webinar uh, that, that we are doing uh, with VMware and NTUC Learning Hub. So I'm going to start with uh, a basic, uh, maybe solution focused, uh, maybe we will do it in uh, uh, future webinars. Okay. So um, I, that, okay, I introduced myself already. So, so let's jump right into it. Um, so, um, as, I'm not sure whether you, audiences are already in IT or maybe you are new to IT, uh, you know, are already experienced. So I assume that, um, uh, you, you know, something uh, basic in IT, what's going on. So I assume that. Um, uh, so based on the assumption, let, 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 let me start. Um, so the, 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 the first thing is that the buzzword is cloud. Uh, this cloud, uh, you will be hearing this uh, for, for many years. Uh, in fact, uh, this was started uh, probably like five, six years ago. I mean, it started way before, but it was getting very popular in this last uh, few years. So uh, when cloud was introduced, uh, um, the, the idea of the cloud is um, you don't buy the infrastructure. You don't buy the server. You don't, you don't, you don't have to install it. You don't have to configure it. You don't have to manage it. Basically, you outsource everything to a cloud service provider. Uh, imagine it's like a PUB. Uh, uh, so you don't produce your own electricity. You don't produce your own water. So PUB is doing it, and they, they, they're doing it uh, centralized, uh, efficient, faster, and we are just consuming as a service. So we will be charged monthly based on the utilization. That is the cloud concept. So before cloud, every company, they set up IT infrastructure on their own. So they have their own um, data center, uh, own servers, uh, own employees, upgrades, patches, you know, everything is like kind of decentralized. Everyone owns their own thing. It's like owning their own car, which we know that is expensive. Instead, why don't we grab it? Okay, so that is the idea of cloud, okay? So cloud, there are uh, many vendors now, but initially it was started with uh, AWS, Amazon. So Amazon is the first uh, to, 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 you know, to, to bring cloud uh, to, a, to a large scale. Uh, many st companies start to implement that. Then followed by um, Azure, Microsoft, I mean, uh, Google. Uh, now we have so many. Now we have... Uh, IBM, Oracle, Alibaba also have uh, cloud services. So there are so many cloud vendors out there. Um, but but you have to understand that the cloud there are there are different types of cloud. Okay, maybe I can draw it out here. Uh, so if we have so-called private cloud. So private cloud means that the cloud which is set up by the company for their own internal use. So that is called a private cloud, okay? So for example, um, um, 
Singtel, they have their own cloud. You know, NCS, they have their own cloud. Our government agencies, they have their own cloud. So this is a private cloud. Private cloud means it's like a closed door. It is only accessed by few, one company or, or, or group of companies. It is not shared publicly. You cannot go and ask uh, for resources in government cloud, okay? So that, 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 that's an example of private cloud. So private cloud is for internal use. It can, it can be only consumed by, 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 by the company, okay? So, so, so what is the difference? What is the difference between uh, private cloud versus what we are doing it before. So last time, we don't consolidate resources. The cloud is the one we actually consolidate resources together. So that is why it is called as private cloud, okay? So private cloud is managed by the company. It is set up by the company privately, and then it is only for selected use. It's not open to public. So this is so-called private cloud, okay? Obviously, private cloud, I cannot give examples because private cloud is private. You know, how to quote a private example, okay? So it's a private. Most companies, they do have their own private cloud, okay? Then there is this thing called public cloud. Public cloud, obviously, you might, whatever names I just told you, like AWS, uh, Azure, um, um, yeah, Oracle, IBM, so they are called public cloud. So public cloud meaning these companies, they set up the infrastructure and then they just, you know, let everyone, you know, use it. Okay. Of course, paper use and so on. So, so that is public cloud. So, so these are two major thing, private cloud and public cloud. Um, okay. How to set up public cloud? You just go and consume it. Okay. As long as you have a credit card and you have uh, enough money to pay, there is nothing much to worry about in the public cloud. But in private cloud, you have to set up everything, okay? So, so you have to buy hardware, you have to buy software, install, configure it, manage it. And this is where VMware comes in. Okay, so what VMware does, VMware supplies software solutions so that you can build and run the private cloud, okay? So, so, so for, for example, if you go to aws.amazon.com, azure.microsoft.com, you, know, you, you go there and you can create your applications, you can create your resource. But in private cloud, somebody has to do it. Somebody have to create that. So this is where the IT, admins come, IT admin comes in. So what they do, they, 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 they buy server, they buy storage, they buy network, and then they install VMware software you know, and then they, they create a cloud uh, services so that uh, it can be consumed by, by, by the users, okay? So this is where VMware comes in, okay? So now if you ask me, um, uh, which, is, which, which is better, private cloud better or public cloud better? It's like asking uh, owning a car better or renting the car better, you know? Well, it all depends upon the use case, okay? Uh, and there, there is a misconception that public cloud is cheaper, okay? In fact, initially when it was marketed, it, that is how it was marketed, you know? Because um, the best way to sell a solution is based on the cost, but it's not true, you know? They say that public cloud is cheap, but it's not really true in the long run. Maybe initially public cloud looks cheaper, but in the long run, public cloud could be expensive than the private cloud. The problem with the private cloud is everything is upfront. You have to buy servers upfront. You have to buy softwares upfront. So the ROI, it will take time. It will take some years so that you can get the ROI. The first year will be super expensive, okay? But in public cloud, there is no upfront cost. You just straight away use it. But on the long run, it will be, it, I mean, not it will be, it might be expensive. It depends upon uh, which cloud vendor that you go for, which services you choose, how much data you store, uh, you know, th 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 there are so many factors. So there is no, no one can give a definite answer. Okay, private is cheap, public is expensive or vice versa. It's, it's not possible to tell. So so, so that is why we have to go and calculate. Uh, that, that, that's why we have a solution architects in a company that you need to compute. Okay, what do we want? Uh, which cloud services that, that, that we can choose? We cannot choose any house services. Uh, uh, there are some data locality restrictions. You don't want to store a data in some other country soil. You want to make sure 
the data is stored here so that our data cannot be read by other government you know what i mean there are so many factors going on that is the reason why the public cloud adaptation was slow initially because people worried about security i'm going to store my data there i'm going to run applications in someone else data center and it is located in a different country different place so how my data is secured so so there are lots of concerns that's why if you if you notice strategically all uh, service provider like aws google they set up their own data center as much as possible in each country so singapore there is a data center for aws and azure uh, and google um, uh, there is one coming up in indonesia um, you know so 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 this gives more um, um, confidence for customer to go for 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 the cloud services so last time you may know that uh, government agencies and all they don't they don't trust this okay but now um, the banks for example dbs you know uh, they are they are going for aws they are going for vmware on aws which i will talk about is what is later so so now the adaptation is getting more and more towards public cloud because of uh, regulations because of you know there are so many um, regulations you know uh, 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 like uh, a simple one is pdpa for example so similarly there are many um, um, regulations uh, for public cloud so as long as the cloud service vendor follows that um, customers are okay uh, you know uh, going for that so so that is the public cloud so even though the public cloud is getting popular um, um uh, uh, as i said sometimes it could be expensive number one number two in public cloud you don't have control okay the, 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 so uh, so sometimes it's not bad let's say you want to do some sort of customization you can't okay because public cloud you just use what they deliver you cannot go to pub and say that i want 240 volts you know i want less uh you know um, current or or i want a certain amount of uh, uh, minerals in in the water you know you 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 can't say that you know because it's given you just consume it so so that that that's the thing in public cloud in public cloud um, maybe they give you some control but they cannot give you the entire control okay in fact that is what you want that is what you want to outsource you don't want to manage all the headaches you outsource them so 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 there are pros and cons in private cloud and public cloud so what we see in uh, today's world is that enterprises they go for public cloud at the same time they have private cloud also so in a way they have they have they they they, they use both if, if you go see any big enterprise they use both and and there is a word for it and it's called hybrid cloud so hybrid cloud means enterprise use private cloud for something and they use public cloud for something okay all the public facing websites and all you can just go for public cloud no problem because websites are public anyway so you can you can put it in the cloud no issues you can take advantage of auto scaling for example uh, imagine let's say there is a festival season okay uh, you, you you expect uh, more people to to check your websites if it is a private cloud you have to buy but that servers are useful only for only for that period of days only only those maybe one week or one month you know after that your servers are useless so you bought something and it is not fully utilized so after one month one week is useless or let's say you are doing a project let's say a six months project just for six months you bought a server but after the project ended server got no use in 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 this use case the public cloud is a great uh, uh, use case so you go for public cloud it's there you just use it so you're going to pay it for 6 months or one week or one month whatever days you consume after that you just you know cancel it you know what i mean so in, in that use case public cloud is cheaper so so like that i can give you many examples um uh, uh, public cloud is better over private cloud and vice versa private cloud is better because you have full control in long run private cloud is actually cheaper if you know how to manage it efficiently um so 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 there are pros and cons as i mentioned so enterprise they do both this is the term that we uh, 
you is called hybrid hybrid cloud both like a hybrid car you know uh, runs on petrol as well as battery you know simultaneously depends on on certain things right so 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 now now there is a problem the problem with public cloud is something called uh, lock in okay let's assume that your enterprise choose a cloud service provider let's say they choose aws for example so if you want to run your resources on aws it's not like you drag and drop it's not like you copy paste it doesn't work that way in private cloud the software that you use to run is different from what aws is running so in a way you have to do some sort of conversion you have to rewrite the application you have to do something to the application so that it runs on aws obviously aws provides you tools to do that but they but but let's say one day you choose that hey there is a new cloud service provider let's say alibaba i want to switch to alibaba for example you can't while well, aws don't provide you the tools to convert from from uh, from here or even if they do or if, uh, i mean it's possible it's not impossible but it's super difficult so you you locked in to a one vendor so that is that is that is the problem with with public cloud these days i, I will get into that how vmr solves the problem so before that you understand that it is easy to go in but very difficult to get out from 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 public cloud okay so that is that is point number 1 on point number 2 there are so many different service provider some service provider are good in one thing for example aws is good in let's say web applications but then may not be good in database i'm not saying but just 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 a use case you know let's assume that for you oracle cloud is better for database so we are not talking about hybrid cloud anymore we are talking about multi cloud you you see how we start we start with private cloud then we go public cloud then we use both we call it uh, hybrid cloud now we are talking about multi cloud as i said for example uh, i mean you can relate this to shopping right so you first let's say if you want to buy something what you do you go to lazada maybe check uh, then you 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 go and you know uh, see the price then then you you before you buy maybe you want to go to shopee and check so sometimes the same product shopee cheaper lazada expensive on the other hand sometimes lazada cheaper shopee expensive or qten expensive whatever so you do comparison so so you choose a platform that is cheaper and then they give you what they want isn't it so same same that that's exactly what multi cloud is so in multi cloud enterprise might choose okay i choose aws for web services i choose oracle for database i use azure for for testing for example i use google for email you know so we are talking about multi cloud okay so these are the terms that you need to know first what is private cloud what is public cloud what is hybrid cloud and what is multi cloud okay so 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 these are the terms that 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 we use a lot as i already told you vmware operates in private cloud sector okay so if you want to build a private cloud you need software we give you software you just you know install it and you can create a private cloud so what what vmware is doing in public cloud or what vmware is doing in multi cloud first of all vmware is not a public cloud service provider you go to vmware and ask for a hey, vmware please give me uh, you know uh, this server we can't i mean we don't uh, so we don't offer those services vmware used to do it but now we no longer do it so you have to stick you, you, i mean if you want public cloud you have to choose one of the vendor out there aws azure for example or there are so called managed uh, cloud uh, i'm not sure whether the, the, something you know so managed cloud means you want to set up a private cloud okay but but you don't want to manage it you outsource to a service provider for example singtel offers this service starhub offers this service i believe m1 also offer this service so meaning they set up a private cloud using vmware solutions so it's a private cloud but it is hosted managed by service provider they just charge you so basically you're outsourcing the installation management to a service provider so that is so called managed service provider managed service cloud for example so it is a private cloud 
but instead of you installing the software, the service provider installing the software for you. Okay. Uh, by the way, it, webinar is one way talking. Uh, if I talk too fast or if you don't catch catch it, just ping me in the chat. So you know I, I'm I'm monitoring the chat box on another screen. So just let me know. All right. So. Um, um, so going back to what I was saying, um, multi-cloud, what VMware is doing? Well, VMware is doing nothing in public cloud, uh, multi-cloud, but, but, but we are addressing a problem. Just now I told you a problem. You choose any vendor, but, but after you choose the vendor, as I mentioned, you log in. It's very hard to get out. It's very easy to go in, but it's very hard to get out, okay? Because of how AWS Azure Oracle uh, you know, works, you know, you have to convert your application to, to make sure it runs, you know, on, 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 on these solutions. Okay. So this is where VMR comes in because VMR was the pioneer in private cloud. So uh, even uh, uh, public cloud is basically private cloud, which is commercialized, right? Uh, shared between everyone. Remember private cloud is meant for one organization managed by one organization. Public cloud is managed by one organization, but it is shared to, to multiple uh, customers. So that is the only difference. So basically public cloud is like anyone can, can, can use, okay? So, so actually last time, um, all uh, vendors like uh, Amazon, uh, even Facebook, uh, they used VMware before, but once the company is big enough, uh, it's like once you are rich enough, you offer to buy your own house, you buy your own car. That, that's what happened to the public cloud. Once they are big enough, uh, they have their own people, uh, team to build, create their own uh, software. So, so, so public cloud now they use their own software. But last time they were they, they, all the companies that you see here, they were once a VMware customer. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, going back. Uh, to the problem. So how VMR solving the problem? So VMR, um, the, 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 first of all, you have to understand what is the problem here. There are two problems. One problem, as I was keep on saying, lock in. You, you get locked into one of the cloud service provider. Whoever you choose, you get locked, number one. Number two, in multi-cloud, there are so, your resources are running everywhere. Some resources are running locally, some resources are running AWS, some running Azure. So now management is a headache, okay? So um, of course, enterprise wants control. They want management. They want, they need a visibility. So if something goes wrong somewhere, you need to know what's going on. Okay. In terms of everything, in terms of management, in terms of scalability, in terms of uh, auditing, in terms of report, um, we need a control. Okay. You, so 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 the the, the the problem is AWS have their own console to manage. Azure have their own console to manage. I'm sure every vendor have their own console to manage. So, so this is what we call silos. So, so many portals, so many management, it's, 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 it's difficult to, to see as a whole. So this is the challenge for enterprise to go for multi-cloud. The idea of multi-cloud is really good because you choose, you buy the product from a vendor who offers a better price or with better services, for example, but you lack management. Just because we lack management, just because we create this management complexity, enterprise cannot go for multi-cloud. So this is where VMR helps in. So VMR comes here offering two solutions. One, we solve the lock-in problem. I will tell you how. Second, we give, we, 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 uh, we, we help you to manage your multi-cloud ops. Th there is more, but I'm sticking to two things here okay, because that is the topic that, 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 that we are talking about it today. So we solve two problems, the lock-in problem and multi-cloud ops, okay? By the way, all these are introduction <laughs> before even we start the first slide, okay? Anyway, once you've got it, you will understand everything we can quickly uh, uh, go through the slides, right? Uh, so understand what VMR does. VMR is the infrastructure uh, uh, solutions company. So we provide infrastructure, software infrastructure, so that you can run your applications, 
Okay, so that is what VMware does. Those who don't know VMware, this is what VMware does, all right? We give uh, infrastructure so that you can run applications inside, okay? So, so you see the cloud is all about infrastructure, right? Uh, uh, instead of going to private, now you can choose public or you can choose multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, whatever. On top of that, applications are also changing. There is another buzzword, you may have heard about it, uh, something called app modernization. App modernization, Kubernetes, Docker, um, uh, what else, uh, OpenShift. So these are all the terms that you will be hearing these days. There is a new buzzword now. There is the latest trend in, 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 in IT right now is app modernization. So basically what we are doing now, we are changing the way how the application has been built, has been installed, has been managed. The best example for you to understand is, last time when you install an application, let's say Microsoft Office, for example, how do you do it? You buy a hardware, you run an, you have an operating system, you install Windows 10 or whatever operating system, then you install Microsoft Office. So this is the traditional architecture, how the application is installed. You have to update it, you have to patch it, you, you may want to upgrade it. So all these things you do, okay? But, 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 so, but, but think about it, how you consume application on your mobile. It's not the same way you consume on your workstation, you know? For example, in, in Android or iOS, first of all, all the applications are stored in a centralized repository, that is the Play Store or Apple Store, correct? Unlike applications, for example, if you want to download Microsoft Office, you need to go to Microsoft.com. For Adobe, for example, you want to download Photoshop, you go to Photoshop. I mean, Adobe, you know, Oracle go to Oracle, Salesforce goes to Salesforce, SAP go to SAP. So it's everywhere, right? And then if you, if you decide to buy, you, you, you buy, buy in, in their, in their, in their uh, you know, respective websites. But after in Play Store, you, you don't go anywhere, right? You just go Play Store and then you search for the app that you want and just install it, download it. So it's a centralized catalog. That is what happening in, 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 in PC world. In PC world, this wasn't happening, but now it is happening. That is app modernization. So now we have a repository. You can store the applications there so that it is easy for people to find your applications. That is number one. Number two, updates. In PC, you have to manually do an update. But in Play Store, it's automatic, correct? You don't even notice the application being updated. It, 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 everything happens automatically behind the scenes, okay? So the Play Store or App Store, they don't care only of installation, but they also take care of application updates. Why you have to update application? First, it fixes bugs. Second, it will bring you new features. Third, maybe for security reasons, maybe there is some loophole you want to patch it. So update is very important. So here in Play Store, the, the application automatically get up to date. You will automatically get a new features, a new interface automatically, okay? So, so, so these are the few examples that I can, I can give you what we are doing in terms of app modernization. And there is actually more. Um, last time, in order to host an application, you need an operating system, you need middleware, and then you run an application. But now, uh, the idea of app modernization, by, by the way, all these are, 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 are all, all refers to the same thing, app, App modernization is the action that what we are trying to do. How we do it, we containerize the application. Again, this webinar is not about this. I'm just telling you what is this all about. So you need to know what's going on. So we have, we containerize the app, then uh, we, we use Kubernetes to manage the app. For container, you have a Docker engine to run this container. Uh, Kubernetes, we have uh, many solutions. Uh, one of the solution is VMware Tanzu. So, so lots of things going on with the, with the application. So your infrastructure is being, uh, being expanding, 
it runs everywhere now and your application is also modernizing okay so now just because you have latest technology latest idea we cannot like overnight we can switch over for example let's say you bought an iphone 10 okay the next day like tomorrow uh, apple releases iphone 11 well if you have enough money yes you go and buy iphone 11 the next day but obviously we don't in general right we use iphone 10 maybe for one year two year once it is dying or once you need an upgrade then we go and get the better version so same thing goes with enterprise they don't just switch the application uh, even though the new way of running application is better they they don't switch because to develop an application it will take years it take years to develop an application it takes years for the application to become stable you know so just because you have a new idea you can't go and you know rebuild the app this involves money and it involves time and there is no guarantee that application will perform as good as before that is the reason why if you go some uh, company right they are still running super outdated version they still run windows nt windows 2000 windows 95 windows 98 well if you are old enough you know all this if not you may, you may not even know what this operating systems are believe it or not some enterprise they still run this applications just because of one reason it works okay they don't want to change because you know i like technology you know i i want to move you know no it's 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 as long as it works nobody touches in 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 the enterprise all right so as i said some enterprise they just maintain it okay some enterprise they want to move it to the cloud they want to run the same app okay but instead of running locally private cloud they want to switch it to the pub- public cloud why they want to do that because to them private cloud is expensive okay so as i said right it all depends upon the factors i i, 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 I cannot tell you there is no definite answer whether private cloud is cheaper in some cases is cheaper some cases expensive so in some cases if private cloud is expensive they can go for public cloud that is called replatform you just change the platform is the same application but you instead of running private you run it run it on 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 cloud for example that is replatform so so and at the same time you want you 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 also should focus on the new way of developing applications right so at least for a, for for new applications you go for the new method okay which is the containerized method the the new way of uh, building um imagine houses for example so when we construct the new houses obviously we put in um um a new technology inside that doesn't mean that we go and destroy all the existing houses because those are already constructed it will good for maybe 40 50 years so when you redevelop of course you reintroduce new technology so in it we see this mix that is what we call hybrid some applications are traditional applications some applications are modern applications so that is the hybrid app so this is what enterprise have right now main time replatform and hybrid okay so i i just told you about modern app what modern app does is the way how the the application is developed how you consume is changed so that that is that is what happening now okay and then this i mean it's very easy you know to put this in the slide but in order to make it happen it's a headache maintaining the existing infrastructure at the same time you need to focus on replatform at the same time you need to support both the applications we are all familiar about how existing app works but 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 you need to now learn how modern app works so that there are, there are new set up administrators to 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 manage it so so it's a it's a headache right and another headache is multi cloud how how am i going to manage so so this is the problem in it right now infrastructure private cloud public cloud applications vms vms are the traditional way how uh, application works right now vms are virtual machines now we have a new concept container so we need to support both and remember i told you another problem is since you are in multi cloud we need to make sure we can manage no matter where the resources are some resources are in private some resources are in public some resources some some have data here data there 
we need to make sure we have to manage it so management is a challenge then on top of that there are other things coming in like ai for example a big data a few years ago big data was a big uh, buzzword okay so we have a big data now ai uh, you know so you you need to uh, incorporate this new things into an existing apps existing infrastructure so 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 it's it's very difficult to manage run the it shop okay because there are so many things uh, going on okay um last time there is no public cloud private cloud okay you build everything on your own but now you have public cloud or uh, now you have so many people in public cloud so you have multi cloud right so that is, so so infrastructure is not in one place anymore it, it's it's everywhere you understand what you are learning here is what are the problems with with, with, with the cloud and how vmware solves it obviously and as i said applications are changing now it's a packaged application not traditional apps um I, I, again uh, this webinar we focus on infrastructure we we, we don't focus on the app uh, but we will do probably another webinar on what is app modernization what is the difference how it works and so on we we will do it uh, you know uh, some other time so anyway some apps are uh, cloud based apps um it's a traditional app but it runs on the cloud for example uh, let's say uh, so last time uh, if, if if i want to access um, let's say um, uh, let's say salesforce if you know salesforce uh, the, uh, the we have to install the software on 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 your machine then you access and so on or if you want to access uh, oracle or if you want to access sap for example last time you have to install but now it is cloud hosted so all i have to do is just go to a portal uh, this is my internal company portal so i can just consume applications from here so i go to the apps so this is so called saas app saas means um we don't use these terms very often these are saas based apps i mean we 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 so used to call the acronym we don't we forget what it is software as a service that is what saas is okay uh, so used to call saas uh, so forget about the, ex, the, the the full name so saas so these these are all saas apps okay so here if i want any app right all i have to do is it's, it's not even install it's it, it i i just see all the apps here so let's say i want this app that app you know i can just choose of course i favorite my apps that i frequently use uh, for example let's say workday you know let's say uh, salesforce for example so i just click it opens up in another browser window and i can access my salesforce app so it's no longer installed anymore on my laptop so i can access this from any device and and the patching is 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 happen automatically so this is the 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 obviously i can't show that sensitive information so um, you, you got the point so now applications are running on cloud this is the saas based uh, apps so the point is we have a traditional apps we have packaged apps we have uh, saas based apps so apps are running everywhere so it is it, it's complicated okay so more cloud services we, we talked about it you know more services which are coming in okay and more management tools so this is the problem i need to hire a people to manage salesforce i need to hire a people to manage oracle i need to manage someone to manage aws someone to manage google someone to manage this someone to manage that so so still we have to keep on learning there are new things coming in need to learn how thing works so that we can we can do management and so on and then there are different tools also every vendor provides their own tool to manage so this is this are all the problems okay and then when you look around and look for uh, uh, public cloud there are so many cloud out there you know there are hundreds of public cloud service provider these days it started from one but now we have more okay sorry so you you, you have you have more Uh, uh, right now, so so choosing is difficult. 
and this is where vmware multi cloud strategy comes in so what vmware says you go choose any vendor you like you choose private cloud you can choose vmware or you can choose microsoft if you go to public cloud you go to aws you go to azure you go to google alibaba you, you can choose whichever infrastructure that you like okay but we provide a centralized management tool so that you can build you can run you can manage and you can connect so what is connect connect is a networking part that we are talking about okay and nowadays is not just about connection now it's also about security we don't want data to be leaked out okay but i mean it, it happens in private cloud it happens in public cloud it actually happens everywhere so so this is the vmware strategy okay so the strategy is aligned to what customer wants we let you build run manage connect product this is the vmware strategy so we we provide solutions we provide software to 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 run your applications any application we support all types of application so this is the best example for example if you want to access my application right you know where i went to i went to this catalog this is uh, called uh, workspace one so all i have to do is just go to the portal you see this portal allows me to access all my apps from from a single place okay so imagine i have office 365 right so by right what i need to do i need to go office 365 to log on okay so go to office 365 then you know do the login you know and so on but but i'm not doing it i go to this portal and i click office 365 from here so it's a it's a it's a catalog not only just catalog if you can see it will authenticate me also i don't need to enter username and password over and over and over again i just enter my username and password once when i log on to this machine and and everything else is auto authenticated you can see that i am logged into the microsoft site without even entering my username and password uh, just wait for it sometimes the internet is slow okay this is the office is why issue which i never seen before uh i can access my other apps uh let's say microsoft teams for example so all i have to do is just click i can access sap whatever so you see the app is getting launched i will be auto authenticated everything is is automatic so from from this centralized i mean this is just one of many solutions that vm has uh, we solve um people struggling to 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 launch the app so is is all the apps are here and all are different types of apps you know some apps are saas based apps some apps are internal apps and some apps are virtualized apps this is an example of virtualized app uh google chrome so this is a solution called horizon so we use horizon desktop virtualization to 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 launch an app so you got the point okay so this is what vmr is is trying to do we want to unify everything together they can run anywhere they can run public they can run private for example obviously office 365 runs on microsoft this one it runs on our local private cloud uh, sap runs on sap cloud oracle runs on oracle cloud so the, the adobe you see adobe creative cloud it runs on adobe but but i can access everything from here so this is what vmr is doing so any type of application any cloud we give centralized management centralized access centralized ops and centralized security okay um so this is how vmware started in cloud okay the first the first major milestone is we provide software so that you can build your own cloud private cloud until today i think vmware is the only uh, vendor who give full suite of products so that you can build and run your own private cloud so that is vmware um, uh, cloud that is what we call uh, vcf 
okay vmr cloud foundation so we give you all the you know uh, softwares for that and also let's say uh, we we also supply software to service providers for example we, we give software to sintel uh, you know so that they can host customers that is something called vmr a uh, cloud uh, uh, partner we call it vcpp vmr cloud partner program so so if if a service provider wants to host for customer we we provide software for them so we have that then we partner with aws i just told you right if you want to move to aws you have to convert your software to aws so the problem is coming out okay so so that is what what vmr does is you can choose aws you can choose google you can choose ibm but in so you choose them because of the infra but you are forced to use their software but now what vmr did is you can choose aws google ibm but on top you can choose vmr you know what i mean so hardware is provided by this service provider so you take advantage of uh, you know uh, server management but the software is from vmware okay what's the big deal the big deal is if you have private cloud you can easily move the resources from private to public and not only that you can move from one service provider to another service provider if you don't like this because everywhere you run vmware so vmware is like a common language right so 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 if if you use native aws versus vmware and aws vmware aws gives you more flexibility than the native aws so we started partnership with aws first later we partner with Uh, Azure, we partner with IBM, uh, Oracle, uh, Google, uh, Alibaba. You know, we we partner with everyone now, so that the idea is they provide hardware, VMware provides software. Because this software is available everywhere, it is easy, flexible for you to move around. That is what that is the value that you get out of VMware on AWS. Okay. and then there are series of acquisitions by vmware uh, cloud health remember i just told you the problem is monitoring your applications runs everywhere how you want to monitor so we acquired a company called cloud health so what cloud health does is exactly the enterprise facing how you want to monitor all the um applications runs across the cloud so that is a cloud 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 health by acquiring this company we can now uh, support uh, multi multi cloud application monitoring we acquired this company called heptio bitnami and bitfusion they are all related to app modernization uh, i told you right that the applications are changing so by acquiring this company these companies we strengthen the app modernization so now we have a solution called tanzu so this is the solution for modern applications so if you want to implement modern application you can use this uh, software anyway the more apps we will talk in you know uh, 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 some other time so because we partner with all the service provider in a way we we uh, the reach is everywhere wherever there is a public cloud data center there is a vmware okay remember you, you still have a choice you can choose public cloud service provider which is what we call hyperscalers the one with the blue is the hyperscaler the hyperscaler means it could be either aws or azure or uh who else uh, maybe i uh, ibm is not really so so hyperscalers are basically aws and azure at this moment all those white are partner data center so we supply software to these people so that you can choose them so you can go to the cloud at the same time you have management control so it is it is something like you have best of both world that is what uh, vmr is doing okay so we support multi multi application so this is the old generation this is the new generation this is the new generation management and we provide software so that you can monitor manage you can even automate uh, 
and everything make sure things are secure we have encryption we have uh, uh, we have antivirus uh, we acquired a company called carbon black so they provide all the security solutions you know so you can implement policy you can do container management and the best part is everyone can provide this but the best part is vmware is a universal software you can run it on any cloud that that that, that is a difference that is a game changer so you don't have to buy so many tools to manage just buy one set of tools to manage no matter where you are what type of application it is and where it is running so that is what vmware is all about right now so it is a vmware strategy right now to support multi cloud and multi apps okay so you have consistent infrastructure management consistent operation and consistent developer model the one who develops application is easy for them to consume also okay so we support all this hybrid operations migrate to the cloud you can scale on demand if you, when you go to the public cloud scaling is the major benefit so you can have that and so on so we provide solutions to do all this okay um so um so 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 remember this one i already told you private cloud public cloud and edge and so on um as i said right it's not possible to explain everything uh, in one single uh, single webinar we will do more webinar uh, in the future to cover more aspects the focus today is what vmr doing in multi cloud i hope you understand the big picture uh, of of what's happening so 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 um what are what are the roles that we have uh, i mean what are the job that that you can do uh, first private cloud okay remember what is private cloud you set up everything in your private cloud everything um, um, uh, server installation network installation storage installation uh, power cooling everything done by the company itself so that is private cloud and what vmware does in private cloud we give software so that you can run hardware is not enough you need a software to run the hardware right so that, so private cloud vmware is a market leader uh there is very less uh, competition in in private cloud i mean microsoft also have private cloud solution but vmware is popular um so um so so that that, that is the course that later um uh, we 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 going to talk about um you you have to start somewhere correct so where you need to start is you need to start from the private cloud because in public cloud you don't understand how the things are set up because all are set up by the cloud service provider you just consume it you don't know how it is it is produced for example let's say pub right you don't know how the water is is filtered you know how the water is recycled you don't know but we know that it's happening but you don't know okay? but if you want to know you have to do it by yourself that is private cloud so the foundation for learning all this is you need to start from private cloud because enterprise still choose private cloud for certain workloads learning public cloud is relatively simple than the private cloud because in public cloud all you have to learn is how to manage them that's all in private cloud you set up you install you configure and manage in public cloud is just manage there is no install there is no configure well you need to do bit of configuration but mostly it's taken care by the cloud service provider okay so 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 later the so i mean that's why we know that we we have to have the right fundamentals the right cloud uh, fundamentals so we created a a, a customized content uh, later uh, uh, james from ntuc going to talk about it uh, regarding the course and uh, funding and all but let me talk about the content how it is related to what i'm talking about today so the course uh uh it's called vmr cloud uh, fundamentals it's a three days course in the three days course what you're going to learn is how to build this private cloud basically you are learning what are all the software in the private cloud to 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 make it as a cloud okay for example if you want to construct an apartment there are so many things so you you need to start from the foundation then followed by building walls pillars lifts you know um, electricity you know water fire safety you know um, uh, 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 you, you know right so so all those 
recipes, the building blocks to create a private cloud, you will learn in the three days course. To talk about the course, right? Um, in order to build a data center, well, private cloud is 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 is, is, is uh, it's basically a data center, right? Private cloud is a data center, but it is used by uh, multiple uh, 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 users from multiple locations, same company, right? That is private cloud. Of course, first you need a space. You need to go and find a location where you want to run the server. There are so many uh, data center uh, location service provider you, you, you go. Then you buy servers, okay? You buy server. Then you buy uh, network equipments like Cisco router switches. You have to buy storage. You have to power cooling. You know all those stuff. Then internet and so on. So, so once you have the hardware, you need to run them. You need a software, and this is where VMware comes in. So, I, I'm writing some names here. Uh, first, you need to have vSphere. So, vSphere is the server virtualization. It helps you to run virtual machines. Then you need NSX. This is the network virtualization. So it provides networking to the virtual machines. Then you have vSAN. It provides storage to the virtual machine. Then on top, we have something called uh, vRealize, uh, which is a management of all this. On top of that, for end users, we have something called Horizon. So Horizon, it's about end user computing. Uh, how can you access your apps? How can you access your desktops? Uh, you know, uh, from from uh, uh, from a data center. I mean, to the data center, for example. So, so these are all the building blocks. So, once you have all this right, then we can call it as a private cloud. Okay, that is exactly the course gonna cover. The course gonna teach you what is vSphere, why vSphere, how vSphere works, what is NSX, how it works, how this, how the you know. So once you understand all the you know uh, 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 blocks, right? Then you can construct a private cloud. Okay. So 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 you are learning probably twenty percent of 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 what uh, VM are doing in cloud space because this is just private cloud. There is more. There is public cloud. There is app modernization. There is app monitoring. But of course, it takes time for you to learn. Uh, um, uh, by, by the way, the, the topics that I covered, maybe few of you already know about this. Uh, wait for more webinars to talk more on, you know, app modernization, for example. But I assume that most of you are new here. I'm, 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 I'm sure that whatever I talk is, is valuable. To learn more technical in-depth, um, go for the course. So we will cover everything in the course. Not only we just teach, uh, you will also have a hands-on. You will do the labs. You will you will learn how to do how to create uh, all this uh, cloud. All right. So um, that, that 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 is from my side. Um, I'm going to pass it over to James from NTUC to talk a little bit more about the courses, the funding, how to register, and so on. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please uh, drop it in the chat box. And also, if you want. Uh, uh, another webinar topic, for example, app modernization. Please let me know in the chat box. So, so the next webinar uh, uh, will be uh, based on um, what, what you're interested to learn. Okay. Remember, we covered only a small portion private cloud. <laughs> there is more to talk about. There is a public cloud. There is the edge, which is networking. Uh, there is cloud ops. You know, there, 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 there is so much things. Okay. So. Um, The admin obviously don't have time to deliver all this. So let me pass over to James. James, are you here? So James is the person who is from NTUC Learning Hub gonna talk about the courses. Uh, let me check the message whether Yes, I will put the course link also. Uh, 
well probably he could be stuck in the meeting okay anyway i i can talk about it because i am i am the developer who developed this course so you all know about ntc learning hub um, so uh, uh, they have ict division um, they they teach microsoft vmware cisco you know everything uh, so vmware partnered with uh, ntc learning hub i said that ntc learning hub was my ex company i i worked here before vmware um so uh, the course uh, that that i that i talked about is this uh, let, let 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 me paste this first link first so that you all have access to it uh, let let i will post this in the in the chat box so you all have access james are you hi back? yes hi murali so sorry Uh, yeah. I was caught up in the uh, previous. Yep. So, um, oh, okay. You have shared the the slides. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Hi, everyone. So, um, uh, for today's uh, uh, course, which is the uh, VMware Virtualization and Cloud Fundamentals, um, maybe Murali can move to the next slide. Okay. So, uh, in terms of the uh, mode of assessment. So uh, there will be a, a online quiz for the assessment, and actually this this course is actually uh, perfect for anyone who know wants to know about cloud computing, lah, and uh, also want to uh, work with various virtualization technologies. Okay, the next slide. And um, okay, so the good news is that um, this is uh, IBF funded. So uh, as as you all know that IBF this year is still ninety five percent. So the full cost fee is uh three thousand two hundred ten dollars with GST. Uh, for individuals, the cost fee will only be one hundred sixty dollars, one hundred sixty dollars, uh fifty cent. Okay. So um, I I will also uh include I also send to everyone in the in the chat, uh, regards to the uh website. Uh, the web link to register. So uh, maybe next. Okay, so uh, we have uh, four classes uh, that is starting in March. Okay, and uh, we have two classes in March and two classes in April. So uh, right now, uh, if you are interested, uh, uh, you can go to the uh, link that Murali has provided. And uh, maybe next slide. And this is the link which uh, Murali has shared with everyone. Uh, next. Okay, so very simple. Uh, once you come to our website, uh, you see that there is a button called Reserve a Spot. Okay, once you click on Reserve a Spot, it will lead you to. Okay, maybe next page. It will lead you to. Uh, this so what you see is uh, a, a checklist. So if you are a self-sponsored individual, uh, which means to say that if you are using your SkillsFuture credit, uh, to pay for this uh course, uh, click on the self-sponsored individual. If you are a company-sponsored trainee, then click on the uh second button. Okay. Then after after you click on, you go on to the reservation, so you can reserve your seats in the any of the four classes. And then, uh, we'll after that next step will be to the billing, and payment. Okay, um, yeah, I think so. It's pretty quite straightforward for the registration. Um, I think we we can also attempt to ask uh, to answer some of the questions that you have. Okay, um, um I'm okay. I'm in right. that box. So this course, right? As I said, uh, introduces the building blocks, uh, how to create a private cloud. So the only prerequisite that That uh, needed is as long as you know um, uh, what is IT infrastructure, what is an operating system, uh, uh, that is good enough. Because we're going to introduce uh, what is vSphere, what is a virtual machine, you know. So, so we, so, so we're gonna. It's a basic course, considered as a one-on-one course. I won't say completely no prerequisite. The prerequisite is just. Like mention basic understanding of uh, what is operating system or what is application, how to install, you know, some basic is good enough. 
okay and then obviously we, uh, because of this covid 19 we don't do it face to face but we do it uh, live online like a zoom so we like a, like what like how we do it there will be a live instructor who will be delivering this uh, class um, um so it is delivered via zoom actually when we run this class we have two instructors one instructor primarily delivering the content the second instructor will be answering the question in the chat box so it will be through the live uh, zoom session and it will be three days this is a three days course uh, at the last day there will be an assessment um the assessment will be conducted by our instructors it's just a simple online um uh, multiple choice question assessment if you sit through the course if you do the labs what your instructor will do you can you can clear the assessment uh, for sc uh, uh, james to you for scp attending this course will there be any training allowance scp uh, for self employed Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So I I have this year. Uh, as you know, last year there's training allowance. Uh, uh, for IBF, but this year, uh, there is still the IBF uh funding, but then the training allowance it's uh is no longer, um, uh, we, we, I mean the government no longer funds for training allowance lah. Yeah. Right. So IBF is only the, the funding for the cost cost fee. So that's your answer. Uh, the funding is only for. course thanks okay. uh yeah so thanks one thing so any other questions from the attendees i believe i posted the url so you can you can look at what are the course content uh, like uh, you can see the price uh, bre uh, breakdown plus also to 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 reserve a spot and so on any other questions you have maybe uh, we give a few minutes uh, for the floor to ask any questions yeah um, regards to uh, uh, maybe funding claims or uh, regards to the course itself please feel free to ask yeah by the way we uh, let me uh, share the schedule the upcoming schedule um, if you want to take note of this uh, some courses we run it on uh, Weekends. weekends weekends yeah yeah some on weekdays so the weekend classes are for those who are currently working uh and and you want to upgrade yourself uh learn more about the cloud um, uh you can you can take a, take on our weekend classes Okay. Uh, what are the program software required to install any? So uh, you don't have to install any software or anything on your laptop because uh, we give you uh, remote access to a to a to a systems which are already pre-installed, pre-configured in a way. So you don't need any special software. Of course, internet connectivity, uh, browser. Uh, Yeah, good audio systems so that you interact with the instructors. That's it. Not no special programs required. Any prerequisite basic knowledge, as I said before, basic understanding of what is operating system, what is application, what is network. A little bit uh, will do. Uh, if you don't know about virtualization, no problem. That is exactly what we're going to cover here. We're going to talk about um, compute network storage, all virtualization. how many learning days in each batch three days so the course is three days so for ellen i think the march course yes uh, is 13 14 and So just to take note that uh, the the course is uh, highly subsidized by the IBF, ninety five percent funding. 
So you just only need to pay 5% for it. And it's a very good opportunity for you to learn about cloud fundamentals and virtualization, which is the, the buzzword uh, for, for, I mean, for, for this for, for, for the time being. And, and I think for the next few years will be the, will still be the buzzword. Yeah. Okay, any more questions that uh, you have, uh, please feel free to ask. If not, then um, Raleigh, uh, shall we end, end the session? Yeah, hang on, there is one question. Where can we find the dates of the lesson oh. day? Uh, I, I, I think, okay, let, let me put it in the chat box uh, because, just give me a minute. Because it's, in a way, it's confusing. I understand. Uh, let me give you the dates. Mm. Oh, the, the actual three days. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because there, there are some that crosses over yeah. weekends. Some we do two Saturdays. So, okay, let me put it in the chat box. Yeah, I think the reason why uh, we have opted for weekend classes is because we also know that uh, some of you might be uh, working full time Monday to Friday. So, uh, during the weekend, class uh, makes sense no? for those who are working full time and are employed. Okay, so it will be for the first will be March 13, 14, 14 20, 20. Yeah. And then the next one will be March 24, 25, 26 continuous three days. And then this, the, the follower will be April 10, 17, 24, correct? Yeah. And uh, April 21, 22, 23. So it's in the yep. chat. Some are continuous three days, some are uh, 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 Saturdays. 13, 14, 20 is obviously uh, Saturday, Sunday, and then the, the following week, Saturday. Is there a cert? Yeah, um, from VMware you will get a cert, of course. Um, yes, there is a cert. Plus, uh, uh, James, do IBF provide cert or something? Uh, do NTUC provide? Uh, we will provide the uh, certificate of completion. Yeah, same. So you'll get cert, one from uh, LHAB, one from VMware. Of course, if you have questions in the future, in the website, there is an inquiry now, so you can you know, uh, ask, uh, a representative will respond to you. All right, so since there is no other questions, uh, thank we, we end the session. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, we probably do more webinars like this and then uh, you will get an invite. So thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. All right, James, see you tomorrow. I mean, we talk to you tomorrow. Okay. All right. Yeah, thanks, Rally. Bye-bye.